What's going on guys, it's Jesus here again to bring you another League of Legends video. Today we're gonna, I'd, I'd like to go ahead and welcome you to the generic talk show about the pros. And this is gonna be a show where, you know, I just I talk about recent pro games and how they went down, players, maybe some off-season stuff, I don't really know, kind of still in development phase on this one, but hopefully you end up liking it. And if you do, leave me some stuff down below, let me know if you do like it, be it my opinions or otherwise, uh, just, you know, let me know what you think. But let's go ahead and get into it, shall we? So this one's obviously, uh, it's going to be about MSI, right? And uh, the final, specifically, because it's it's pretty shocking, right? Because we got Team Liquid against uh, G2 Esports, which is pretty crazy, um, both considering how they actually got to the final uh, throughout MSI so far, um, and just considering the historical context uh, because this is the first time we've ever had North America versus Europe in an, inter inter in an international tournament um, in the finals, right? So, I mean, we've had, like, North America's made it to MSI final before. Uh, obviously, like, Fnatic won the first world championship, if you want to consider it that. I guess there's somewhat of a debate if you want to consider that or not. Um, but also, they made it to the final last year uh, where they lost to IG, so... You know, we've had where North America has made the finals in an international tournament. We've we've seen Europe do it as well, but we've never had it to where North America and Europe are both there, right? Which is it guarantees a championship going to a Western team, which is something that hasn't happened in a really long time. So it's it's something to appreciate if you are a, a Western fan, North America fan, Europe fan, whatever, right? Like it's something to appreciate and be and be happy about and be pumped about, uh, which I certainly am. So I hope you are as well. But yeah, so their their road here, right, and and how they got here. So Team Liquid obviously finished fourth in the group stage, right? They they finished four and six in the group stage, um, and they ended up having to go against IG, who finished first in the group stage at nine and one, um, only dropping a game to SKT, right? So they were supremely dominant throughout the group stage. Uh, Team Liquid struggled to get any wins really against higher opponents with the exception of the last game against uh, G2, right? It's, I mean, we got two wins against against uh, Fong Vu Buffalo, right, which is expected. That's It should be guaranteed, G2, right? <laughs> but it, it should be guaranteed, right? And we, we're glad we secured those wins. And then we split ga games with Flash Wolves where that everybody was like, oh, here we go again. You know what I mean? We're going to end up meeting Flash Wolves in the tiebreaker, and, you know, there goes our shot at getting out of groups again. But now if that didn't happen, we actually were able to make up for that and, and take a game off G2, which helped us get into the playoffs. But because we still were struggling against, uh, you know, higher opponents, going into this game against – or this match, rather, against IG, it's – assumed that TL is just going to get obliterated, right? And the analysts certainly expected that. Um, you had Papa Smith, he gave him a chance for a game. He called 3-1, right? Um, but then every other analyst is calling 3-0. Frosker and even was talking about how they just need to hang in there longer than Fnatic did uh, in last year's World Championship final. So, uh, yeah, nobody had any faith in TL. I will admit that I didn't either. Uh, though when I was watching the game, I was super pumped to see us when we when we got up two games to nothing. Uh, that was pretty cool. And then when we finished and we actually closed out the fourth game was it was just unbelievable, man. It was really cool. wasn't expecting it. Um, but the when you when you take a look at it, still I personally still believe that IG is just a better team, right? They're still a better team than Team Liquid is. They just came in off, and Team Liquid came in well prepared and ready to go and I think that that's the only way that it goes in this way if, if IG comes in prepared as prepared as Team Liquid was I think nine times out of ten um, IG is going to win you know that that match on the day and it just happened to be this time that IG had an off day but the IG matchup when they do have off days right it works well for Team Liquid because Team Liquid's main win condition in these types of games, in really any type of game, they punish mistakes. They generally play on their back foot. They wait for their opponents to overestimate their ability or their power or their read on the game at the you know the game state. And if they misread that, then Team Liquid pounces and and 
tends to punish mistakes really well. But if the team doesn't make mistakes and just accrues small, steady advantages throughout the game, Team Liquid just kind of folds and ultimately loses. So the fact that it was IG, they were having an off day, they were continuing to play as if they weren't having an off day, and Team Liquid was punishing those mistakes, and it, it worked out in their favor. But then you, you go on to the other side of the bracket, right? And then you got SKT um, versus G2. And this one was a lot closer, right? Like, these teams are pretty well matched up. Um, the the game, it went all five games, the match did. So uh, SKT took game one, G2 took game two, SKT took game three, G2 took game four, and then G2 took game five as well. Uh, so it was it was back and forth. They were pretty evenly matched up. And, like, if these teams were to face each other at Worlds, for example, um, I would expect it to be a pretty close game. I think it'll go 50-50, and, you know, they'll probably end up taking games off of each other just because that's, that's how close they are, in my opinion. And, and win conditions in those games were very similar to that of the IGTL game, considering that they both play similar styles to, you know, another team respectively on the other side of the bracket, right? So... Team Liquid and SKT play similar in the sense that they, they tend to play slower um, and punish aggressive mistakes more so than actually taking those risks that are associated with getting those big advantages over the course of the game. Um, though may, you could argue that maybe SKT kind of changed that towards the end of the group stage and in this playoff match against G2 because they were starting to actually get pretty aggressive through Clid, their jungler. He was getting involved um, pretty heavily. Faker was roaming a lot. Um, they were trying to, you know, snowball as opposed to kind of just chill and, and sitting there. And maybe that's where they messed up, you know, because G2 isn't a perfect team by any means, you know. Um, they they certainly have their flaws. They play very hyper-aggressive. And I think if there is a team that can pull off the scaling style at this tournament, SKT is that team. And, you know, maybe they that could have worked out better for them. I don't know. Who knows, really? But that being said, G2 plays a lot like IG does, right? They're heavily aggressive. They they try to make these big plays that result in these big sweeping advantages that they then just snowball with to the point to where, you know, the enemy team has no chance at all. And one thing that differentiates G2 from IG is... G2's picks. They, they tend to do these weird picks that many teams aren't using. Uh, include like Karthus Jungle. Nobody else has brought that out really. I mean, to be fair, it's been nerfed, right? But I don't really... I mean, I think Korea was playing it a little bit, but I'm not sure if SKT was doing that. I, I didn't watch a whole lot of um, of LCK at all this split, but Karthus Jungle was a big pick in, in Europe, and they brought it... G2 brought it out at MSI. Didn't really work out for them, but that they obviously they've done two games now where they've had pike top lane which is certainly a strange style and i think that's what ultimately allowed for g2 to kind of pull something off was the, their ability to pick up these weird picks that nobody really expects to play against and if in that regard they're not ready for it right and i think that through skt for a loop and was able to give g2 the advantage enough to get into the final and so now you got the final itself, right? So Team Liquid versus G2. Who's going to win? Well, personally, I think G2 has the advantage. Um, even, this is coming from a North American fan. I want Team Liquid to win, and I really hope that they do. I'll be pulling for them. But I think G2 is favored. I think that um, assuming that G2 comes in having a good day that they're not going to make enough mistakes for TL to be able to punish to actually win five to, or at least three games, right? A five game series. I think G2 will come out with some kind of weird pick. If they throw out this, if they do this Pike top lane thing, I think team liquid is going to struggle to do anything with it. I think that they're, they just won't know what to do. They'll probably have impact on something like Kennen, right? And he'll have probably messed up somehow in the early laning phase, had to burn his teleport top lane, 
and Wonder roams mid, kills first blood Jensen, right? And it just snowballs from there. Uh, that would be my expectation if they were to pull out something like Pike Top, right? And these are the kind of things where I don't think Team Liquid is going to be able to, you know, keep their composure and hold off G2 long enough if they if they do want to do the the scaling thing, right? I I will say I don't like X Smithy on Rexai, personally, and Rexai is a super powerful jungle jungler right now, and I think Yankos can play it well, and I think it, it's going to mean, you know, Smithy's on. Skarner or um, Sejuani and oh, if they pick the Hecarim one more time I'm going to lose my mind right? but they're going to play these types of junglers and take on the back foot like they always do I expect them to do it it's kind of their strength and so it's, it's what I expect I expect them to do it I expect them to lose honestly I don't think that they're as good of a team as G2 is I think G2 is slightly better um, that being said though if if G2 doesn't come in ready, which I think they will, but if they don't, it, I, I'm not going to put it past TL to actually pull this off, and I'll be, I'll be getting it if if they pull it off. But just to be fair, I think that that G2 is going to win three two, or three one. I'm sorry. <sighs> there, I said it. Um, hopefully, you like the new portion of content on my channel I don't know uh, just kind of starting it out but hopefully you liked it hopefully you can agree with my opinions or don't I don't really care but uh, leave my leave your opinion down below let me know what you think is going to happen do you think G2 is actually going to pull it off like I think or do you think TL can can do it and go all the way actually win MSI this year but yeah hopefully you like the video if you do give me that thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because you know i'm going to bring you the top quality league of legends content on a daily basis i'm jesus and i'll see you guys next time